Do we have communications from public officials? Do we have communications from members of the public? Any of the members of the public wish to speak? Okay. Nobody wishes to speak? Well, yes, I see a distinguished member of the public. Please get up and speak. Oh, yeah. Use the microphone, Charlotte. Don't Thank forget. You. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You may recall that I'm Fred Gector from Truro and uh, that I've been the chairman of the Charter Review Committee, which uh, I think uh, ended its mandate as of December 31st of last year. Um, two of the members of the committee are with me here. You know both of them, but they can introduce themselves as well. I regret that we were not at, at, at your last month's meeting when you discussed this. Um, I don't think any of us were, were aware it was on the agenda. Um, so I thought it was appropriate to come to you and provide some input on, on our perspective on the continuance of the charter review. We have, um, and I probably, At the end of our, our discussions the previous year, as you know, we put forth an article for public vote at the end of the year, which did some housekeeping items that had been asked for by staff and assembly uh, members. And for the first time in 11 years, there was a charter review that was on the ballot, uh, and it was approved by the people um, this past uh, year. Uh, and the changes have uh, have been implemented. So I think to that degree, at least the Charter Review Committee had been successful in some of its deliberations. We, we decided at the time to do the housekeeping items without getting into the more pithy uh, issues because they were more, uh, they were more difficult and we found it, it hard to come to a lot of conclusions on them. It was our expectation that we would have more time uh, to discuss the major issues that uh, came before us, both from, from our own thoughts as well from uh, the public and experts who came to talk to us, and including the business roundtable. We went to the Cape Cod uh, selectmen's and um, and counselors, and since, since we have one right here, <laughs> uh, and, and solicited input. At the end of our year, we had some items that we ag uh, agreed needed to be discussed. And, and I hope you're not going to take the discussion or the presentation of any of uh, these items as having a, a, a bias implied in them. There is none. Uh, the thought was only to discuss them because they came to us. Uh, and as we went through the charter, section uh, by section, uh, we did an analysis of every section. There's a five-page document that we created that shows the sections that we had specific text that, that, that we wanted to look at. But I'll give you just a list of seven items that we think are uh, continue to be germane uh, and ought to be discussed in some form. Uh, it, that the work ought to continue under whatever aegis you feel is appropriate. Um, the first, and these are not in, in, in any order of uh, priority, is the role of the Assembly of Delegates. Um, and that, of course, is a major uh, topic that continues to come up. Uh, the weighted voting of the Assembly of Delegates continues to come up. The number and the representation of the county commissioners, and that uh, ties in a lot with the form and function of the Assembly as well. Uh, to clarify the role of, uh, of the regional government and, and its various components. Uh, the potential for uh, staggered terms and term limits. A, a definition of the circumstances under which the, the regional government could declare eminent uh, domain, which is currently uh, in the charter. 
the, the appropriateness of the assembly functioning as an advisory board for county expenditures. Um, so these are topics, uh, again, that we did not conclude our, our debate on. We had no uh, specific opinion on the time other than we feel there is additional work that needs to be done. Um, and, and, and I know a lot of these items are, are collectively and individually personal to a lot of people in this room. But this committee did never, did not take them that way and had no conclusion and would like to continue to study them. We can talk about the form under which they ought to be studied, if it's a, a charter committee or some other uh, form. But the key component I'd like to present today is that there is work that needs to be done. Uh, the charter has not been studied in detail uh, in a number of years. Uh, and I think that all of us would be remiss if, if this work did not continue. Um, I'd like to answer some questions first and then some of my associates can speak as well. Thank you, Fred. I'd just like to say that how, how we got to this point is that obviously all committees sunset at the end of the session so that, as you say, your, your work ended on December 31st. Right. We then had to, we had a new assembly convene on the, I guess, the first meeting of January. Right. Um, we were going to we we the ne the second meeting in January January if these guys remember we had a bear of a meeting right. on uh, the DCPC and in, in, uh, right. so the first meeting in February which was the previous meeting I thought that this would be the time to bring up the recommendations of the committee at, at least as, a, as certainly as a courtesy I mean we owed it that too much as, to you even though we've gotten them previously and uh, with the idea that the assembly within us our, our body could come to some kind of a consensus so we had a brief discussion on that and it was obvious at that point that we were not going to come to a, a consensus it was more of a uh, uh, there was going to be a, a substantive debate on the continuation of this so that's when I felt that we needed a, a, a broader discussion and uh, since then several members of the committee have commented on on their views and so I'm, I'm giving you an opportunity now to comment on your views but do you have any questions for course I also should rem remind the new members I sat on that committee I did uh, Teresa Martin and and Leo Kokunas and uh, Charlotte when course, she was Charlotte, a member yes. assembly and uh, County Commissioner Lyons and we had uh, three uh, two two at-large members um, like, uh, whose yeah. names escape me right now. Yeah. But uh, many questions from anyone here on, on the uh, what went on? I mean, you've gotten this in the past. We're going to have a broader discussion on this. Yeah, oh, sure. I don't think it's appropriate uh, to ask a question per se, but I would ask as one of the newer members if these reports that were generated last year could be sent to all the new members. I attempted, I've seen some of the minutes, but I don't think all these reports and five-page documents are necessarily on the website. That would be helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, and I think uh, Charlotte has uh, something to add. And, and just uh, briefly, and I think Fred gave a very good overview, but I hope everybody bears in mind here, one, one of the dynamics that really affected this um, group's work and obviously affected prior charter review committees is the calendar which is mandated by the state. And we didn't find out until well into our work that the calendar was so aggressive. And, and previous charter review committees, you can go back and look at those records for the new members as well, they missed the deadline. And, and I'm not speaking any ill towards them. They were all hardworking folks, volunteers, um, some from outside, some uh, members of the assembly. But they worked hard, but those deadlines that come up in May and June are very difficult when, when you have a dynamic of a volunteer committee in order to have whatever it is you're going to recommend land on the state ballot. And of course, you folks as the legislative body had to weigh in and decide whether those items, which were the housekeeping items as we all call them, were going to be on the ballot. So we can back up that calendar even more because we had to work with your calendar as well. So in fairness to the committee, um, we really weren't 100% clear when we started. And we had, we worked with staff, we worked with Bob Troy and, um, and Jenny and, and God bless uh, Diane was very, very instrumental in helping us. Um, and we, we weren't aware of this uh, at the beginning. So we went the, those first few months 
going after some of the bigger issues and then all of a sudden we learned that we were, we were going to be backed up to this deadline. So then we made a conscious decision to just go after the meat of the charter in terms of housekeeping and many of the things that you saw that the voters approved are things that were taken out of the charter that really belong more in personnel manuals, are more administrative in nature and really not charter in nature. Um, so, and, and the only other thing I'd add is I think you have a very good committee here. Um, I think we only had one member that really, um, the gentleman from Falmouth really had difficulty being here with Mashby or Falmouth, I get the two mixed up. Yeah, Mashby, yeah. But the other gentleman was from Falmouth. He was here all the time, Michael Corrigan. So minus one member, the, the vast majority of this committee was very active. We did a lot of homework. I have stacks of papers about this high studying the, the legal uh, aspects of this whole thing we call Cape Cod Regional Government. This is a very unique animal here in the world of government across the country, not just here in, in our neck of the woods. Um, so. We did a lot of homework and it would be unfortunate for a group like ours that we're doing this as volunteers to see that um, squandered really. Uh, it, would, it would be good to capture all that hard work and maybe add a couple more members. Um, I know the business round table is, is looking to be of help here. Uh, from, from my own standpoint, I don't think it would be har harmful to the process of looking at this charter carefully and the bigger issues if there were a group like the business round table doing work on this as well as a committee here uh, at the county. Okay. So uh, thank, you for your, thank you for your time. Charlotte. Thank you, um, Charlotte Strebel. Um, it's a little strange to be sitting on this side of the table. I think it's been around 12 years. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Yeah. My my name. I'm sorry. I I should know better. Uh, my name is Greg Milne. Uh, I was a member of this charter review committee, um, and I'm also a city councilor in uh, Barnstable. No, it's legally a city. Uh, I don't want to mix up terms when I'm in this okay, building. Okay. <laughs> As I was saying, it was, it's been about 12 years since I sat on this side of the table to announce that I had been appointed by the town of Yarmouth to fill an unexpired term. So here I am 12 years later sitting here to address you. I'm afraid I'm not going to be as kind and as nice as my fellow uh, members are. Um, I have to uh, uh, disagree with Greg. I feel that we never got to the meat of the, of the charter. We spent entirely too much time arguing about the name of the, what this government should be called. Hours and hours of arguing. We, we argued about the weighted vote, hours. And then we argued about how many commissioners we were going to have. We never got past section nine of the charter. I do have to agree with what, I, and I did, incidentally, I did watch the February 2nd meeting and uh, so I know what all of you said about, about, the, about the charter and how you feel. So it's no surprise to me. Um, I did want to say um, to what Cheryl said about there not being any public meetings. We had planned public meetings. Um, the clerk and the assistant clerk worked diligently to set up three meetings across the Cape, one on the outer Cape, one here in the assembly room, and one that was to be held in Falmouth. It was, it was difficult to do with timing and uh, dates and everything, but they got them set up. By the time we had figured arguing about all of these things that I just mentioned, suddenly, our time was up. We were looking at September and a, um, getting something ready to put on the ballot. And also the fact that we, were, we found it very dif uh, difficult, excuse me, to have a quorum present at our meetings with seven members in a, on a committee. Um, if one comes and then gets up and leaves, 
we're, we're short one, and if two or three other people can't make the meeting, we couldn't get any business done. It was ridiculous. We met, and we all said hello, and uh, well, do you have any thoughts, and we can't do anything. So it was a great deal of wasted time. But I did, uh, in looking at, at the um, tape, I did want to say that I felt that Teresa was absolutely right that um, we, we need a charter that a person can read and understand. There are a lot of words in it that need to be removed, but to go through a charter word by word is ridiculous. But we need a charter that tells us what we are and what we do. Who does it and how it's done goes into the administrative code and anything pertaining to personnel goes into the personnel policies. So we need a, a clean charter that explains to everybody who we are and what we do. And so I do hope that you will see fit to allow some kind of a committee, whether you want to call it a charter review committee or what you want to call it, but I think it's important, and, and um, Fred just said it, there hasn't been a charter review since 1950, 19, 19, uh, 2000, 2000. That was, that was the, and it never, it never got passed, and I think we felt that the recommendations that were made by that committee, it was our duty to get them to, to the state, to this committee, to approve and to get it on the ballot. So I hope that you will see fit to, to, um, continue, to continue the work that we started. Two things to what uh, Charlotte said, and, and I'm going to take take exception to the word argue. Um, uh, the, the, this was a committee that worked well together, and, and I think uh, that Ron can attest to that, and Leo um, and Teresa, that we debated and, and we did not argue. But I think the the, the quorum issue w was, was not because of um, a majority of the members. We had a member who became uh, ill and could not participate any longer and was not replaced. I, I think that person should have been replaced. We had a member of one of the elected uh, bodies who, who uh, rarely showed up. Um, and when that person showed up, always came. I thought I was being edited. <laughs> <laughs> Where is she? <laughs> uh, and and either showed up uh, later, left early, and uh, was not all all, all that helpful. So um, I. I uh, I think if we reconstitute um, the committee, we need to look at at how it's constituted, what the public representation is versus elected uh, officials, and I think the majority ought to be public and 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 not necessarily assembly or commissioners, uh, particularly since those are the bodies that are being looked at in a charter review. So. Um, those are just a couple of additional uh, thoughts and comments. As a member of that committee, that the big issues that have become uh, to the forefront recently about the makeup of the Board of County Commissioners and the, the Assembly of Delegates were brought up at some point. I mean, we decided to say, decide, do we look at those big issues and do we going to make any major changes? And I think it was either the decision of the committee to not make, not at this round, go round anyway, given the time frame, to make any recommendations on substantial changes in the actual structure of government. And maybe just because, A, we didn't think that the time was right, given our, the restrictions on us. And secondly, those changes would have had to go through the assembly, been very controversial, and very doubtful that we would have made a lot of progress in some of the other things that had to be done that were a little, little easier. But that doesn't mean those things still aren't on the table, as they, as they would always be in any, any organization. Organization. So I think you can give yourself a little more credit than, than you have in the past. I was part of those discussions, and they were, 
They were animated, but they were productive, I would just say that, most of the time. The argument over the name, well, we'll go, we'll go there, but Paul? Um, at, at the risk of sounding contentious, and I, and I do generally support the idea of continuing this committee in some form, but if the committee wasn't able to get any major decisions made when you were under the gun and going against the deadline, how could it be structured in such a way that we are going to know that we're going to have some results and decisions when you're not under a deadline? I think two comments. I, 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 there has to be a better review of the people who are put on the on the committee to determine availability. Um, there were a couple who had work commitments who uh, right up front indicated they could only meet one day a week or certain times. Uh, there was another one who became ill and was not replaced. Uh, and there were assembly members and a commissioner who were very busy and, and sometimes did not show up at meetings. So I think we need to be more careful uh, in who we select and get a commitment up front. I, I and Cheryl, I think, were, were about the only two who attended every single meeting. Uh, and we came, and sometimes we didn't have a uh, quorum, and people didn't tell us they were not uh, coming. The clerk always sent out an email um, asking who was coming and who, who wasn't, and some didn't show up. And, and I really think it's important to be, um, uh, to be discriminating in who we put. I, I, I was the, the chairman of of uh, the the Truro uh, Charter Committee and and a couple of comments. We didn't have any elected officials on the on the Charter Committee, and we made sure up uh, front that in order to meet the schedule, that the people could commit if they had something that was life changing in the middle of the task, they were replaced in, uh, immediately by the uh, Board of Selectmen or or whomever. So. I think since there wasn't any charter review committee for a significant period of time that was proactive and uh, there probably wasn't a model by which how, uh, how to run this successfully. Well, so. uh, just, to, just to comment on that before we go into the, is that the, the, the makeup of the committee was decided by an ordinance which was previously passed before my time in the assembly so that our choices were limited. It, but that ordinance can be changed. It's not that, that, but we did go by ordinance, so many from each district, not too many volunteers. We didn't get a single volunteer for an open seat from the, from the Upper Cape. So it wasn't that I had 50 people to choose from. The people who came forward were pretty good, but you're right, at, and time, time went on, some of them couldn't make, there was an election in there, you know, Sheila was running for office, <laughs> Greg was running for office, but, uh, um, so neither of them successfully, I might add, but it was a good try. <laughs> but it was. I didn't say that, huh? <laughs> but, uh, and, and so anyway, that, that's, but, why, that's how it was set up. But what, what, well, what, before I get to you, yeah. I'm going to talk. Did you have something to say? No. Okay, Greg. Just one quick point to respond to uh, Mr. Pilcher. Um, very simply, to, to answer your question from a little different point of view, you have to really look at the calendar. And, and I think where these other Charter Review Committees have run into difficulty is the Charter Review Committee ends up running right into the state election. So that if you embark on, a, say, a, a renewal of Charter Committee, and, and I would hope keep most of this committee intact, not all of it, but most of it, and you're starting it as far away from the next state election as possible, which would be now, then you're going to be well positioned to have ample time to give the big issues their true due. Whereas what, what happened with us is we were meeting into that winter and spring just prior to the, to the uh, state election in 2010, and that's where you, you end up with the difficulty. And that's where the previous Charter Review Committees ended up with difficulty. So I think it's a matter of when you start your Charter Review Committee, and now would be the, the better time to, do, to start it back up again. And then we have ample time to the two, 2012 election. Okay, well, we'll discuss this further when we, when we convene, but thank you very much, Fred, for your work and, and also for your comments uh, here today, okay? Are there any other members of the public who wish to comment on this? Um, hearing none, um, I'd like to introduce uh, someone who's going to be with us for a while. Janice, you want to come up and, and uh, 
or I hope will be with us. I don't want to presume anything. I mean, um, Maggie was Maggie was going to do the introductions, but she had to leave early. Um, That's okay. My name is Janice O'Connell, and I can see uh, some. Push the little button there, and you get the green light. Um, Janice Got it. Uh, <laughs> you'll Janice. hear that a lot. I hear it every day. <laughs> My name is Janice O'Connell. Um, I do see some familiar faces uh, here today, and it's a pleasure for me to be here. I'm looking forward to the work that I'll be doing with the speaker and the deputy speaker and all of the uh, delegates here today. And I understand that you have been without. Um, a speak. Uh, I'm sorry, not a speaker, a clerk, for a while, and I'm going to guess that the acting clerk is probably very happy today <laughs> that <laughs> Tuesday is, is coming quickly. Um, I know that based on what I've read, I cannot replace Diane. No one can replace Diane. But I am looking forward to working very hard to meet the standards the very high standards that she has set for the clerk. And I also hope that um, I will also be able to mirror her work ethic. And I'm looking forward to starting on Tuesday. All right, well, that's right, because um, according to um, Janice is giving, has given notice in previous jobs, she works for, is it Goffstown in New Hampshire? Yes, town of Goffstown. Town, town of Goffstown, just south of Manchester, where I used to live there for a while. And um, so she will be starting as of the 23rd of, of uh, February? 22nd, the I 22nd believe. The 22nd of February, okay, so if we, we are, your appointment by the, um, by the assembly will have to be as of the 22nd, so you won't have to come right up here and, and, and do this right away, okay? Even though I'm sure Michelle would like that, but uh, <laughs> I think you've all been aware of the process that, that resulted in, um, in Janice's selection. It was uh, quite a contrast to, for instance, uh, another county department's hiring recently. We actually put out applications and, and took a lot, of, a lot of response, and uh, we did interviews and re-interviews, myself, uh, Marsha, Julie, uh, Teresa, and Charlotte. Um, given a, a broad spectrum of experience um, and of necessity respecting the privacy of, of the applicants. We did receive solicitations from people who gave recommendations, but as it turns out, nobody recommended you, but we thought you were the best candidate anyway. <laughs> the, people who, the people who knew you recommended you. Okay, yes. so um, without further ado, if I, uh, you want to make a motion, Marcia? I'd be happy to. Um, I make a motion that uh, we appoint Janice O'Connell as the clerk of the Assembly of Delegates for Barstool County. At, as of? As of February 23rd. The, uh, 20, 22nd. Okay, February 22nd. Okay, second on that? Yeah. Okay, any, other qu any further questions on this? Hearing none, all Question. those? Mr. Speaker? Yep, must be speaker. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it does the current structure, uh, the, the one that um, was in place up until now, continue? Is um, is this a full-time position? Um, is it a salaried position? I mean, we don't have a, other details contrary to your characterization. We've been well informed of the process. Um, I'm, tr I'm trying to get a little bit more information aside from um, Mrs. O'Connell's personal information. Well, I, I think you were you were given uh, uh, you should have been given copies of the salary level and so on that were offered with along with the job application and that was negotiations between um, Janice and and Maggie as the hiring. This is a a county hire. We we elect them to county hirings. She's under the county uh, jurisdiction as far as salary and benefits go. Um, as far as it's being a full time position, that will be decided. It's going to be a full time position as of as of now, but that will be decided during the budget process. When when the, when we as the assembly produce our budget, and I guess that's going to be uh, uh, coming up pretty soon. Is that the answer to your question? Uh, sufficiently, yes. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Okay, we've got a motion on the table. It's been moved and seconded. Char uh, Cheryl, and under discussion, um, Mr. Speaker. Um, this is one of the few times I think in my career where I've been very happy to have a very small voice in this matter, in the sense that with the weighted vote, um, I think a couple of the more senior members of the assembly will be uh, taking care of this vote. But I just want to state for the record, I feel um, 
very awkward about this process. Um, it's been expressed previously and it is what it is, much like the charter and everything else that governs what we do. Um, but I, I know for me, I don't, I don't have a strong uh, position up or down on this appointment, but I'm, I'm leaning towards uh, voting no or abstaining, and it's not because of the applicant, but because I'm so new to the assembly, a couple of us are, that I, I feel uh, pretty much uh, out, out, out in the woods on this one. So um, because th that will po probably be an unusual position in the vote, I just wanted to explain it before we go to the vote because it's, it's an awkward position to be in, uh, particularly with someone you're going to be working with. And I, I just wanted to explain um, that, that that's the reality that I'm experiencing um, because I am new to the assembly. Fair enough. Mr. Speaker? Oh. Uh, uh, you? Yep. In, in a... In a I attempted some camaraderie here. I'd like to support uh, the comments made by the delegate from Provincetown. Um, not all the delegates were um, sufficiently involved in the process to know necessarily what's going on. I think you're a well-qualified candidate. However, uh, it would have been my preference to uh, settle the uh, issue of the job before we hired for the position. Um, and as a resident of, of the uh, yeah. Of the county, um, I would have expected more interest uh, from county residents for it. And um, having, if that had, had come to pass, uh, I think the learning curve would have been much shorter. This is a unique body. You know, you're not going to see a lot of it uh, around the country. It's hard to ask for clerks of other assemblies to apply for it. It would have been hard to hire a headhunter to go out and find a clerk of another assembly to do this. However, having said that, um, there probably are qualified people who are residents of, in the county that uh, um, could have been appointed to this position. Okay, um, Leo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, the member from Provincetown mentioned that, um, uh, alluded to her weighted vote. It's my understanding that this vote would not be a weighted vote. It's an appointment for our clerk. It's a, a roll. It's just a regular one person, one yes, vote. Yes, that's, that right. that's true. Yes, that's the truth, Leo. Okay, thanks. And, and, and I, I would like to add that I would encourage our delegates to, uh, to vote in favor for this appointment. Uh, we put an ad out. We, we, got, we got a lot of, an awful lot of response back. We had a subcommittee look into this. They did their due diligence. They went through it. The applicant came through with flying colors and support of all the uh, subcommittee members. I think it would be prudent for us to uh, to support their uh, their recommendation. Yep. Hey, John, did you have oh, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I once again, too, um, we're all in a little bit awkward position because uh, we've had one clerk for 19 years. So, so this is awkward for all of us, and, and, I, and I would caution that. But the process is maybe arcane but clear. Um, we, we did due diligence by casting a wide search. We got the best candidate from that wide search. Uh, we do not hire. Uh, the, the clerk. We appoint. We may appoint the clerk, but the, the hiring is done through the personnel uh, office at the at the county commissioner's l level. So I, I'm very comfortable uh, with the process, and I'm very comfortable with the uh, committee that uh, vetted the candidates and came up with uh, our current choice. And I uh, would heartily hope that all of you will uh, cast your vote in whichever way you decide. Okay. Yes. Uh, I, I just would like to speak with this briefly. I, too, am very new to this uh, assembly. And while I think there are some issues that we as new members ought to weigh in on, as, for example, the Charter Review, I think that my predecessor delegated this to a committee that has come up with a qualified candidate after a due diligent search, and I feel that that merits my support. Thank you. Okay, we've got move, the motion moved and seconded to appoint Janice O'Connor as our new clerk. O'Connell, it's O'Connell, I meant. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. Okay, looks like the vote, looks like the ayes have it. Thank, Thank you very much, you. I'm looking forward to next week. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Speaker, yes. technical issue. At 6 o'clock, I'm going to need to change the, the DVD. Okay. Would it be a better time to take the, a three-minute pause now? We'll let that yeah, we can, we, can, we can take a pause now, because we're not going to finish in 15 minutes, I don't think. I think
Teresa. Oh, Teresa. <laughs> and Cheryl. <laughs> I want to make sure the lower cape is represented here. Okay. Okay, we'll now, the assembly will now convene and we will begin by uh, this, a continuation of the discussion we had last week on a potential continuation of the charter review. I know, uh, Julia, you had sent out uh, some. Did everybody do their homework? Yes, I did it. I got it. I just wanted to make sure, in case you had any further comments to make. Uh, well, since I, yeah. um, I guess, uh, having kind of recovered from the amazement at uh, Sheila's email, um, <laughs> which I'm going to use as an example in my classrooms of the contrast of tone and content because it's really very important for students to understand the tone matters uh, a lot. But my point, I guess, is for the, con if, if are we discussing the continuation of the present Charter Review Committee, or are we discussing our general views on would we like a change of the government structure? Which, which are we really talking about at this meeting? I'm, I'm looking at a, at a discussion of, of continuation of a charter review in some form or another, not necessarily okay. the current board, not necessarily the current structure, but should we basically uh, endorse a continuing or, or a renewed charter right. renew? Uh, then I would committee. like to comment on that briefly. Okay. Uh, in fact, of course, I have been on a lot of charter reviews and was uh, on the one that was the previous one five years before. Oh, to say we ran out of time was not really, we didn't think there were any pressing changes to be made at that time, the previous five years, and so we didn't uh, push to do them. Uh, from reading the minutes of this last Charter Review Committee and from talking to some of the people at the meetings, I got the impression that it was a dysfunctional uh, committee. Not that the people weren't smart, not that the people weren't well-meaning, but that it didn't work well as a committee. I think that is partly because on the one hand we have the problem of should the comp composition be people familiar with county government such as assembly members or commissioners, uh, there's drawbacks to having those people in it because they have their own preconceived notions often. But the disadvantage of not having them in it is that virtually nobody else knows anything about county government. That's an, another problem, and it's not their fault necessarily, but it doesn't make for a very useful exercise to sort of learn everything about county government and try to master some of the, the way it works. So I guess I'm not particularly interested in continuing this particular charter review. I think if some people, such as, as Sheila, feel strongly that there's an, it's important to change the structure of the county, I could be sympathetic to that and I could get involved in talking about it because I can't resist talking about it like I just wrote up my thing. And if the business round table feels strongly about changing the structure of county government to accomplish certain purposes. I think those are both pe people and groups that ought to be coming before us and, and saying that they want to do that and then maybe there could be some involvement by people in the county level, but I think Sheila would consider that on the one hand, you know, we won't be useful and on the other hand, maybe we should get into the program. I think that what came up at the League of Women Voters meeting where there was the suggestion that there be a, you know, a, what I'd call a quick and dirty review uh, where Rob O'Leary and Henri Rauschenbach might chair a, a committee and it would work on it for two months and then it's, and present something. I can see that as being possibly useful. Um, I'm totally open to change. I'm totally uh, open to any possibility, but I want to know what are the reasons for those changes. It can't be that, 
you know, if you think the weighted vote is wrong, then you have to go to a council. If you want uh, a one man being charged as a leader, okay, you've got to do that. But what is going to be gained? And I never hear any discussion of that. I only hear, well, we've got to get rid of this or we've got to get rid of that. I want to know what are we gaining from doing it? And that's the questions I tried to set out. So I think those are very worthwhile questions. And I think we could have greater leadership. We could have better accountability. We could have better visibility. We could uh, change the direction of our revenues. I'm all, I'm all interested in discussing those things. But the charter committee as structured in our charter and set up by the speaker, I just don't see the point of doing that and continuing that at the moment. Okay, um, yes, would you like to come in? Uh, if I could please, sir. I, I have to say I'm very strongly uh, in agreement with uh, Ms. Taylor's remarks. I, and again, I am a new member here. You mentioned that there's an ordinance that says what this Charter Review Committee is supposed to have on it. Well, I couldn't find it. On the website, I don't have a copy of it. I don't see in the materials I've been given a proposal for what a charter review committee, what that, how that should be amended, what 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 the charge to that committee ought to be. And so, therefore, you know, I'm I'm getting a theoretical question. And yes, I think change is a good thing, but change for the change's sake is not necessarily, I think, where we need to go. I think if we want to have a solid proposal of a committee, uh, the composition of which everybody here would know which I'm not prepared to vote on since we haven't, I couldn't find copies of this ordinance anywhere. I think that we should, somebody should put, be delegated to put something together, whether it's the existing charter committee, a subgroup of this body, I don't care, to put something together for us to discuss in terms of a formation of a committee and a charge to that committee. Um, because I, I, I really feel like we're, we're, we're coming at this issue without enough information to make an informed decision. Okay, Cheryl? Um, I, I think the delegate from Tro is kind of making a nice introduction to some comments I wanted to make um, as well. Sometimes it's a lot of fun being the new kid on the block. You don't have to take responsibility for anything that's happened. And you just walk in and try and teach yourself. So I thought, okay, I'll go to the charter. I'll start there. And I discovered I have four different versions of the charter, and I can't find any one person to tell me what the charter actually says about forming a charter review committee. So I hope there's somebody in the room right now that can answer this question, but the irony is it's fundamental to this conversation. And until we answer it, which is sort of what my friend from Toro was saying, until we have some very basic facts, mm -hmm. it's awkward to have this conversation. One version of the charter calls for um, uh, at least once every five years, the assembly of delegates shall provide for a special committee. Another version says, at least every five years, the Assembly of Delegates shall require that the Standing Committee on Governance will fulfill its statutory requirement. Are, can everyone, does everyone know but me which version of the Charter is the right one? Look at the date. What's the yeah, date? I did. What's I the did. latest date you have? Well, the one that was emailed to me as the most recent says um, Standing Committee on Governance. But the one I got when I was elected says special committee. Now, there's only two months between those two things. And unless this was changed in November, the, the yeah. makeup of a charter, charter review. See, I thought it was just housekeeping we did in November. Did we actually change? I'll, go to, I'll defer to Leo on that. If you, if you. No, I'm sorry. That issue was not changed right. in November. But the charter was changed in November. Oh, I, so I, I'm assuming that the one that you got after November had the language which was most recent and updated. And no. again, I don't have my charter in front yeah. of me to tell you that. Well, I do have a version yeah. of the like, new one, but I don't have it with me. Okay, I'm going to challenge all of you to pretend you are me and look at section 9-4, periodic review, charter and ordinances, and figure out which version is the current one. Because they're very different. One calls for a standing committee to deal with all of this, which after listening to everything I'm listening to, I see a lot of value in having a standing committee. Regardless of how many times you have to reappoint people, at least you wouldn't feel like you were under a gun trying to do three years' work in two months. Uh, the other version, talking about a special committee, uh, that opens up a whole other can of worms. And frankly, 
if it was changed, since there's two versions, well, I'd like someone to tell me when did this go to the ballot and why was it changed? Because this is fundamental. So for me, one, I'd like to, know, to have the current version of the charter, and then second of all, um, then we should have the conversation, because if it's a standing committee, I'm leaning towards uh, supporting you as the speaker to name a, the membership of all your right. standing uh, committee. If it's a special, I think I'm with, with Julia, I, I, I think we need a new committee. Well, uh, to be honest with you, this is not the first inconsistency that I've seen between the Charter and current practice. There are things in there which probably some, maybe the Charter Review Committee should have looked at. There are some things that are in the Charter that don't necessarily have to be in the Charter, can be dealt with by ordinance, but there are some inconsistencies. There. I have the same section as you have, and I uh, talked around to people who have been here a lot longer than I have about the Standing Committee on Governance, and they all gave me the same response. So. Uh, whether there has been, but it is in the charter, and I and if if it continue unless and you've got to remember that a version of the charter which was submitted was never passed by the by the by the by the legislature. So um, if the charter still gives me the powers to set up that committee and specifies who will be on it, and I think it, 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 there, there's a determination of who's on it. You see, you're saying no. Well, again, it depends on which version you choose. If it Right, I know, but uh, if you're if. going with the one that says uh, uh, standing committee on governance, uh, that's all it says. I was I wasn't able to track down. But I, I think it makes provisions for for members that are outside the the, the county government. I don't know. I couldn't find it. Okay. Well, let's let's get beyond that. But yeah, that's a vehicle that could be used to, and standing committees should be. You know, when the, I, the concept of standing committee is it's there all the time. So it hasn't right. been, I don't know why, and I don't know anybody else who does know why. Leo? I don't know why, but I'd like to speak. Oh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> As a member of the uh, dysfunctional uh, last uh, Charter Review Committee, I've been being called a lot of things today. Um, I, my first reaction on why it was so defunctional is because it's appointed every five years. And if you go back and you look at the last five charter reviews, you will see in the minutes that they discuss the same things every five years. And they waste a lot of time doing it. And I disagree. The last charter review, review committee did run out of time. The timetable is simple. A charter review committee has until June 1st, at the very latest, to produce any changes to the Charter to this Assembly. This Assembly votes those changes, then they are forwarded to the following November election. So if we were to appoint a committee today, or the chair was to do it, speaker was to do it, we were to agree to appoint one, their time frame would be they would have until June of 2012 to come forward with recommendations for us to review, discuss, and vote on. The ones we voted to agree to change would be put on the November of 2012's ballot. Now, if we don't support the speaker to reappoint a new Charter Review Committee, what I see is going to happen is five more years are going to go by, the then speaker is going to appoint a Charter Review Committee, those nine people are going to waste the same amount of time, and I don't like using the word waste because quite frankly it wasn't wasteful for me because I was new to county government and I was new to the charter argument and discussion. So it was educational to me. So five years from now, people are going to waste, again, months re-educating themselves as to the same thing that the previous charter people did and they're not going to come forward with a good, clean document. <clears throat> Probably two or three meetings into this charter review, I asked the question, why isn't this committee formulated every session to review it so that they don't have to constantly go back and rehash things and rehash things and can put their time and efforts to the matters at hand? 
What does the charter say? Can it be read by an average person on the street and understood? And are there things in it that can be dealt with in other documents as opposed to being in the charter? I want to make clear that I think what's happening and what we're discussing today is should the speaker reappoint or appoint a new charter review committee? By no means do I believe we are discussing whether those same members that were on last year's Charter Review Committee be reappointed. I just don't think that we should, we're discussing that at this point. If you want to get into who those people should be, I would respectfully ask that we at least focus our discussion to should we appoint or suggest that he reappoint a new committee and then decide who those or suggest who those members may or not be. I don't think there's anything bad that's going to come out of reappointing or appointing this subcommittee. There's nothing bad. I mean, the only bad thing is if you're lucky enough to be appointed to it because <laughs> you're going to have to waste your time to go there. If you're not interested in being on it, then tell the speaker you're not interested in being on it. If there are members of the public that aren't interested in being on it, don't tell the speaker that you're interested in being on it. But if you do have an interest in county government, let him know that you're interested in being on it, and let's move forward and have them look at it. To clarify and, and to look at the document, I feel on an ongoing basis. If it was me, I'd be proposing that this be done every new Assembly of Delegates session. There should be a committee that that's their kind of thing. But. Again, I hope we support the recommendation to ask the speaker to reappoint. I, I don't want to use the word reappoint because that insinuates that it's those members to recreate the Charter Review Committee for 2011. Thank you. Mr. Speaker? Yes, uh, Julia. Well, Leo, I think that there's sort of two streams of thinking in the county in general. One is do we need to clarify the document, streamline the document, work with the ambiguities? We've obviously, Cheryl has uncovered many more. That kind of work, there is that interest in the county. Then there's a very different, and according to Commissioner Lyons, very aggressive and committed uh, passionate group of educated and influential people who, unlike us, the rest of us. who are interested <laughs> in significant change uh -oh. to the structure of government. So I think we're really talking about apples and oranges. And so the question is, do we want, you know, uh, do you, does that make sense? I just think we're talking about two different yeah, things. And we'll get Tom in here, and, we'll, and then we'll go around again. Right. And I'll speak up. Uh, well, put Tom in then Spiro. Okay. Um, on uh, Tuesday, uh, the delegate from Dennis, the delegate from Yarmouth, the delegate from Mashpee, and I spent an enlightening, uh, I think, two hours with the Mid-Cape League of Women Voters who are continuing their discussion groups around, uh, you know, county government and getting input. And I learned um, as much from my fellow delegates at that particular session about their views on charter changes that might be out there, on their views of how... Uh, what obstacles there were to the assembly uh, being more effective versus what obstacles they might see uh, to the uh, to the county commissioners uh, providing uh, leadership on certain issues, and and it was very instructive, and I thought it was in, in a very congenial manner, and it said it said to me that. Um, and they asked some very probing questions. I thought they had some good questions. They're well prepared. I understand they're doing it in the lower cape, and, and uh, they're trying to put something together for the upper cape. But um, it really seems to me that a discussion has begun, and I think we can continue to participate uh, in, in those discussions before we 
send a committee running off to, to solve problems that we haven't even defined ourselves. I, I have a clear idea uh, on what the gentleman from Yarmouth would like to see. Um, he had some fairly minor changes, you know, minor wording changes that would have great implications as to how one would get elected to this, this assembly. A discussion of that among the committee of the whole might resolve that issue one way or the other as to wh wh whether that would move forward and whether we would even want a um, um, uh, a, a new reconstituted group or some other group to, to spend a lot of time discussing that, you know, if, if that were not something, some way we wanted to go. So I, I, I liked uh, the issues that um, uh, Julia Taylor raised. Um, I thought she, she covered a lot of different points, and some of those we could discuss ourselves in, in, in an ongoing manner. And, and I, I kind of come back to a little bit of what we, when we had our last um, discussion, and that is that, you know, we've got to show that what our relevance is, not that we just sit around and say, what does our charter look like, but actually do things, put into motion um, actions out there and, and show that we're running a, 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 a service, a, go, a form of government that in fact provides services to people and those services are meaningful. And whether that's improving the transparency so a greater number of people see that we're thoughtfully discussing these uh, these subject matters and, and certainly those that are more intellectually gifted than, uh, than, uh, than us could come and, you know, say, gee, I saw you on TV and I'd like to, um, you know, say how you were wrong, you know, with, with uh, only having a couple of degrees and and, uh, uh, and, and a few years of experience and, and let them uh, pick us apart a little bit. But um, So I think transparency could be a, a major component that, that we just build in. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm coming back to the end star issue again. I, I, you know, with all, you know, due respect to the gentleman from Howard, you know, 12 towns said to the county commissioners, we'd like to see uh, you know, you consider clear cutting within this process. They chose not to. Now, does my town think that's leadership? You know, I would venture to say if I had a discussion among them, they'd probably say, gee, they, maybe they showed leadership in some may, way, but they certainly ignored our particular request. So, you know, we're going to be held accountable for the actions we take and whether the, this form of government is being responsive to things towns are asking them for. And to me, that's a good example of where they, they're going to show leadership one way or the other. And if they decide against what the town wanted, come back to us and make that case. See, I know you took that vote, but guess what? You were wrong. You know, show, provide the leadership before, before the same committees that voted these things and say, here's where you, you were in error. You know, we think you should be putting these pesticides down and not clear cutting and doing the other four things that, uh, that, that they came out with and made the recommendation. So once they get to that point, I hope they'll come back to us and say, here's why we agreed with you and didn't agree with you. And that'll keep a discussion going around one little issue. But I'd like to see us define the problem, maybe take little chunks of it, and in meetings like this, is, uh, when we have a lighter, uh, a lighter agenda, put it on the agenda and say, let's talk about it. Okay, Spiro. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and uh, thank you, um, the delegate, to the delegate from uh, Barnstable for those generous comments. We had a great discussion with the League of Women Voters, um, which fleshed out a lot of these issues. Um, for those of you who heard my comments and read my um, comments on the subject, I faithfully thank you, but I would like to withdraw them at this time. I think there is more at uh, risk here in proceeding before we are ready um, than, than proceeding when we are. I think we um, still need to get our house in order. Uh, part of what we heard from the folks who served previously was that the, pro uh, the process seemed to have slowed down or ground to a halt when they lost their uh, ad administrative support. Um, to do an effective um, charter review at this point is going to require uh, some clerk assistance. I think I'd, I would rather at this point give our new clerk um, six months to get up to speed and uh, be prepared to assist um, fully in the process rather than try to reconstitute the process uh, without that help. So um, from my uh, perspective, much as I would like to see the ch uh, charter um, reviewed and, uh, hope and, and possibly changed, uh, we're probably uh, some months away from being ready to do so. Uh, taking Tom's suggestion, if I heard it correctly, which is let's keep talking about it and figure out what the right answer is, but I wouldn't be prepared at this point uh, to recommend that we proceed. 
Okay. Um, Paul, did you have something? Yeah, I just, I, I, I think I want, I want to second that, that, uh, that thought in that it, it's clear to me from listening to the discussion, and I, and I don't have a strong feeling one way or the other, that there are people who have strong feelings that the charter needs to be changed or reviewed. But it's also clear to me that we don't have a real clue of how to go about structuring that. And I think we need to wait and get that set up in a way that we're confident is going to produce some results and not result in another committee that comes back to us and says, we spent all our time arguing. Okay. Um, yeah, Teresa. Can I just make a really pragmatic suggestion? Um, think about what Cheryl said. Would it be possible at the next meeting for us to all get a copy of what everyone knows and has proven is the current and correct <laughs> charter? And could we all take time, seriously, could we all take time to read it and see if we understand ourselves what it's really saying? Mm -hmm. Because I know it's easy to forget that step, and that would kind of get, make sure we're all on the same, starting on the same, we really are all starting on the same page with the really correct and accurate copy, and taking the time to consciously read it might be a really great way to start to frame what the best next steps may be. Yeah, um, yes. I echo that emotion uh, that we should have a, a, a current and up-to-date charter, but I think we also, not to let our committee toil in complete vain, I'd like to see their report that was apparently given to somebody, but not to me, and I would like to see whatever ordinance or whatever formula or whatever the mandate was supposed to be for this committee. So that if we do at some point at the end of the summer decide to uh, give, create a committee or ask you to appoint a committee, we can define what we want that committee to do and what we think the issues are that it should address. Yeah, um, this, I, I, have a, I have the charter in front of me here. I was given a heads up on this by Cheryl, one of Cheryl's emails when she talked about the uh, Standing Committee on Governance, which uh, I, I can only say is it, it's, it's referred to in the charter. It hasn't been set up. Um, it says here, at, once, at least once every five years and years ending in a five, at least once every five years and years ending in a five or a zero, Assembly of Delegates are required that the Standing Committee on Governance fulfill the statutory requirement of reviewing the then existing charter and ordinances of the Cape Cod Regional Government. The Standing Committee on Governance shall determine if any amendments or revisions may be necessary to the charter and make a report with recommendations to the Assembly of Delegates concerning any proposed amendments or revisions which said committee may deem to be necessary or desirable. And such review may be conducted in Function with the Cape Cod Regional Government Legal Officer, or if the Assembly of Delegates so directs by special counsel attained for that purpose. It also states previous and general provisions the charter may be replaced, um, revised, or amended in accordance with the procedure made available under chapter so and so forth. It speaks about once that, once that committee makes its report that the Assembly may then by a two-thirds vote recommend changes on the on the vote and then it specifies which changes can be made and which changes cannot be made the the overall structure is set up by um, an elected legislature so we can do certain things we can't do so that's the copy that i have now it's recommended also to your question it says later on it says um, Copies of the charter and ordinances of the Cape Cod Regional Government as most recently amended or revised shall be kept available for distribution to any person who may request the same at the office of the county clerk. A fee may be charged not to exceed so on and so forth. In 1988, there probably wasn't a lot of them and they had to rummage through you know, a file cabinet. Now in, in, in 19, uh, 2011, I hope that we either have a procedure set up or will set up a procedure that we can we can find these things. But you know, it's, there's a lot of ordinances come and gone. So yeah, do Mr. You want Speaker, to I'd simply that? point out in response to your reading that the text that you just read is not what's available on the web. Okay. I downloaded what's on the web. I read it. That's not what's there. You know, I think that we need to get our house in order before we ask somebody else to recommend to us some further thing we need to do. Okay, then we got to find out when that was amended. If it, um, yeah. sometimes we, we, we I, I've seen copies of the charter changes included that were never approved by the legislature. So okay, and I think we're starting to tag into what the problem is. On the website, the version is dated 2000. 
I have that version as well. It's the same version that the new members were given in January, and it does not have the language you're referencing. The, um, that has the five day Right, and so the question then is A, determining which version of the charter is the right one. Secondarily, if we could get the information about when was this changed? Because this is a significant change, and if, if, if this went to the ballot at some point, it sounds like from what you're saying it would have happened either in 2000 or prior. Kind of nice to, to know why. If there was a vote, it would have been in November of 2000. On the ballot. This is on the ballot. Well, the Cheryl has this that is dated May 2000. Yeah, that's yeah. as a revised by ordinance. But if there were any changes, we need to find out if there were changes on the 2000 ballot. That would have been November. Yeah. There were no changes on the ballot in 2006. Okay. We know that. Well, I, I agree. And there I've, were changes in 2010. I, so. I agree we're groping in the dark here, so I will get con con contact the county attorney and he will give us the, the current um, version that's, uh, that we're, we're operating under. Sure, um, Teresa. I just want to request, can we all actually really, can someone make sure we each get a copy of it and can we take on as individual homework the task of making sure we all read it? Because I know until I actually was on the committee, I didn't really take the time to go through it line by line and I suspect many of us haven't done that in the last few months because really it's not, you know, probably in our top ten reading list. But if we're going to talk about it, if we could each take that bit of homework on ourselves to be refreshed on it, I would, I think that would be a really important platform to be working from. Well, regardless of whether the, the, uh, which version we're in under, the, the current procedure has been to operate under the, the current ordinance which sets up the Charter Review Committee as, and it specifies not, I think it specified seven, we might have amended it the last time, but as it stood out, we had three delegates, one from each area of the, of the Cape. We had three uh, members who were um, solicited from the various towns and stuff who were not delegates, but they, they, they recommended them. Um, uh, Greg was one of those, I think, and so on. And uh, then we had a county commissioner who was going nameless, and we, we had um, uh, an at-large member and myself as speaker, and I think, I don't know what the, is that nine? We're getting close to nine, so we, that's, yeah. So we had, we, in other words, it, if, we, if we were to reconstitute a committee, we would have to change that ordinance and, and set, up another, set up another system, whatever system the delegates wanted to set up. The reason I mentioned the, the, the um, committee, the standing committee on governance, it sounds like a vehicle by which we could do the housekeeping that we've discussed. It's not, you know, it's not a charter review committee under pressure. It's certainly a standing, and it may contain members outside of the county organization. I'll have to, I'll have to discuss that, but by which housekeeping, like for instance, some of these inconsistencies in the charter can be discussed and brought before the assembly or if necessary, recommended at the appropriate time for, for, for the ballot. So, Marcia. Mr. Speaker, I think from the discussion here today, if you, if you request people to vote, on creating a charter committee, I don't think it's going to pass. So I, I think that's a moot point. I think what we should start is exactly what Teresa just said. Everybody should get at least what we think is the most current char um, charter, which would be nice, and, and it's a lot of work for the clerk and the, and the assistant clerk. And we should read it, and we should spend, honestly, the next couple of meetings trying to go through pieces of it. Uh, I, and also, with our new clerk coming on, um, I think we should, the committee has sunset. There is no committee. It's sunset at the end of last year. There is no committee. We now need to take on the responsibility of figuring out what kind of situation we're in with the charter, and maybe we can revisit the whole issue of appointing a committee in the fall. I don't think uh, what I'm getting from this the board today is that we're not that you, that we're not prepared to set up another committee because I think they'll spin their wheels just like the one just they just had that they admitted that they spun their wheels on a lot of. I things. don't think so, anyone. I don't think anyone is recommending setting up the same committee, giving them the same charge, and, and giving them simply a longer time frame. I think what we're discussing here is how how we want to proceed in, in talking what Leo suggested. We've had several incarnations of five year of, in five-year intervals of the Charter Review Committee, and for one reason or another, it seems like the current system of Charter Review, which is set up by one version or another of the Charter, has not 
served us well. So here's a general discussion as to what is the alternative to that. Is the alternative a standing committee or a longer serving body which would meet periodically and, and discuss changes? Or are we going to go with the current procedure, which would be to simply wait another four years and set up another committee under that, this or other organization? Or uh, alternatively. I, 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 Mr. Speaker, I think, I think we actually do have an agreement here, okay. which is that whatever process we choose should be at least slightly in compliance with our current charter. Yeah. So let's get a copy of the current charter and maybe we can talk about this again at the next meeting. I th we've got lots of views, but if we don't know what the charter says right now on this issue, we are kind of spinning our wheels. Julia, did you have something? Well, one last point. There does seem to be, based on the meeting we went to uh, that the League of Women Voters put on, based on the meetings that they are further setting up, based on the Cape, the business roundtable and people who obviously feel they're going to be pushing this further, there is some process underway and I think there is the issue still of do we want to join, actively join that process or not or kind of just ignore it which because I don't think it's the same issue as that of do we want to understand our existing charter and review it and tidy it up. I think that's a different different matter. So that I think still has to be thought of and and yeah. eventually decided in some way. And there were suggestions made that there would be some sort of other kinds of committees set up that wouldn't be set up by us but which we might want to be part of. All right. Well, I'm I'm perfectly willing in, to table this issue until we get more information on where we stand as far as uh, current ordinances and, and requirements. So um, it's not like we have to have uh, this thing come up next week. But Leo, um, I just want to remind you in the document that you send out, I believe it was dated January 10th, that says um, standing committees. On page three, it does in fact say charter review committee and it has a list of members. Um, I, I'm not sure what weight that document carries, but in, in light of confusing people that may in fact get that. Um, when was this sent down there? January 10th of 2011. It's the new c uh, committee appointments by the speaker. The assign Assignments. The assignment of committees I don't dated think January I 10th. I the charter review committee. Somehow that may have Well, it's on pa it's page three of that three-page document. And I think that maybe um, if you go through the files, it might be prudent to just send out a memo to everybody that okay, that well, committee was not established or appointed. Again, just in case. A year from now, somebody comes across these documents and wants to know how come this was appointed. <laughs> Mr. 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 Speaker. Yes. Um, uh, could you, uh, I'm hoping that you can bring this discussion to a close. I would, however, like to say for the record, I don't think any other organization should be, nor is, driving this process. Um, we've made ample mention of the business roundtable. Um, I don't think anyone here should be reacting to anything they may be doing. Um, I don't personally think they're doing anything other than talking about it the same way we are. The only organization I would have any fear of here is the League of Women Voters, and let's try not to anger that group. <laughs> Okay, well, if it's all right with the assembly, we will get further information on this and we'll inevitably revisit this issue uh, some sometime in the future, although we've got a lot of heavy lifting to do in the next couple months. Okay. Um, do we have a report from committees? Paul, are you ready to give a report today? or you? Uh, I will defer my report until the next meeting. Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you become very popular. Uh, do we have a report from any other committees? Report, report from the clerk. Yes, there'll be a public hearing on proposed ordinance 11 1, which is the fee schedule, March 2nd, 2011 at 315. Okay. Um, is Assembly? Leo? Leo? Um, just for uh, my own clarification on how we're going to proceed from this point forward, um, I was given in my packet uh, three reports of the committees. Um, standing committees on govern, uh, government regulations has two, actually all three of them. 
Um, were these are these being treated as minutes of that meeting? Or have they been? They haven't been. They and haven't approved been approved. Or? They haven't been approved. They, the only way you can approve them is if the committee themselves approve them. Is that something that we would be doing uh, now at this? At like for instance, at this meeting, could the chairman of the government regulation ask uh, the people if they're in fact here to in fact I, approve them? I mean, they're, they're out. They're a public document. No, uh, I guess I'm just asking, when are we going to approve minutes? Yeah, we, you, we, just, we just gave just, them. Yeah. I think it's, it's, it goes against procedure. Usually a committee has to convene and hold a meeting and then approve their own minutes. I don't think we can do it in the context of the, of the assembly right. meeting. I might be wrong, Leo, and I can, I can check with council, but I promise you that I will get those minutes approved, okay, if it's the last thing I do, which it may be. Um, do we have any? Yes. Microphone, please. Point of information: These aren't uh, characterized as minutes. It's a report to us. Oh, okay. I think you would simply accept the report of the committee as a report, and that's the end of the matter. Yeah. Well, I, I stand corrected then. We never really did do minutes. Yeah. Okay, so apparently I'm finding out that the public hearings issue a report, the committee meetings have minutes. So when we have a public hearing, once again, this has been the procedure I find out from people who've been here longer than I have, that we simply issue a report of the public hearing. Okay. Um, if, if there's no other business to be brought before the assembly, I'd like to take this time out to thank our interim clerk, who is, uh, I think the time frame in which she served was just right. I don't think we would have gotten any more. <laughs> in a couple more weeks, we would have been lucky. I'd also like to thank Jenny, of course, for, for carrying an extra load, you know, during this time now with Diane's absence. And both of them. Um, both of them serve pretty well under a trying situation. As you see, there isn't a lot of institutional memory around here, so we had some of the stuff we had to make up as we go along, but uh, we... Like the charter. <laughs> yeah, I like the charter, so... But I, pr I promise you that one of the first... Um, the first duties of the new clerk is to get all this stuff lined up, the ordinances available, so we can go back and see what we did a year, two years, three years before. Diane had this stuff at the top of her head. She knew, she would say at a meeting, if you want to do this, you have to change ordinance or resolution such and such back from 1983 or whatever. So we're going to have to get a process. But I'd just like, like to thank Michelle and Jenny for the work they've done during this time. And she won't be going away. She'll be across the street. But yes, right? Okay. Well, thank you very much. And Delegate from Pro had something more. No? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I, I, thought, I, th I thought I saw your hand up and I was just. Oh, okay. Make a motion to you adjourn. Know, second. Second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. I knew I, I, knew I was in trouble.